Sup everybody, welcome to Sketch Day Live. <clears throat> it is Friday, May 22nd. We're back. We do this three times a week on Fridays, Wednesdays, and Sundays. As always, I'm going to kick things off with a bit of a warm up. <clears throat> Start with some straight lines here. If you're watching on Instagram and you're wondering what's going on, I'm an industrial designer. I design products, I illustrate, tell stories about experiences but definitely cause trouble on the gram, on the internets. So if you want to catch the full show, head over to youtube.com slash sketchday.com. That's where I will be chatting, interacting, answering questions, all that good stuff. And even better, <clears throat> all the sketches I do, I actually upload to a Google Drive link, and that is in the video description so you can check that out there hope you're having a good Friday already went for a run got up early all of that good stuff it's a good day so I like to draw some straight lines my apologies youtubers I didn't cut to the overhead um, I do like to draw straight lines to kind of warm up and then we'll do some circles ellipses and then we'll get to our main event sketches drawing all that good stuff I'm using a paper made flare if you ever want to know what I use you can always go to sketchaday.com slash stuff tell you about all the pens markers even the camera equipment accessories all that stuff that I use I'm drawing with my shoulder here and elbow a little bit a little bit different of a warm-up this morning What's up, Tom? How are you doing? I should mention, special shout out to Tom. He's our latest Patreon. Thank you for the support. He's in a tier by himself, so he's going to get some special perks. If you want to support Sketchaday, you can visit patreon.com slash sketchaday. If you're watching on YouTube, there are links provided there in the description and video frame. All the answers to life's questions are provided. I have over 300 videos, so if you like drawing, there's probably something there for you, okay? You can always search. Of course, it's fun to interact with you and chat and all that good stuff. All right, so I got my circles done. Now let's do our final exercise, some ellipses. I'm gonna mix this one up a little bit. The idea here <clears throat> is I want to sketch a series of ellipses that progressively increase in degree just like so as I move down the page and the reason for that is a lot of times when you're sketching products you are going to be dealing with a progression of ellipses okay so that's my thought on it that's why I like to do it similar thing here I usually draw a car with these to show you guys why we do warm-ups but I thought I'd mix it up today let's just do a torch flashlight so I can take this front ellipse offset it maybe connect some down here create a little step like so connect these lines couple lines bolder let's put a grip on this guy right there maybe a strap of some sort I like flashlights with straps it's kind of a thing for me maybe it's because if you're hiking and you have your flashlight or whatever you don't want to lose it right a little strap there and now I can just take a gray marker if I can open this, what's up, David Latrice? The regular is Tom. David and Latrice, both Patreons. Thank you for your support, Tom. We are going to do another pre show this week. This basic gray is insane. Um, <laughs> like, I like chart pack markers, but sometimes the colors are just like wild. Like, what were you guys thinking? Anyhow, so you could throw a little gray there, maybe on the Backside, and you can see that our warm up is really 
all about understanding his relationships so you can draw real products. So on the shows, I like to take suggestions, but I'm going to kick things off with a sketch of my own. It'd probably be fun to sketch something of a perfume bottle. Something like that. Hey, yeah, so <laughs> there's an example of why we warm up, or else why I warm up the way that I do. All right, as always, check in on the chat. Let me know where you're watching from, how you found this stream. Definitely check out the YouTube, like I mentioned. Great place to be. All right, so I thought I'd kick things off, like I said, with a perfume bottle. They're kind of cool, and I figured I could make up my own thing. So I'm just going to start with kind of an axis here, just a line of reference on the paper. And I know my lid is going to be circular in some fashion or way. And we can make that up as we go. And now just kind of pick some perspective lines here, draw the top. I want this to be somewhat faceted. At least that's kind of what I'm thinking. Some cool perfume bottle here. I mean, normally you could start with uh, an orthographic view if you wanted but I thought I'd just jump right into it you know glass is really really challenging to sketch so one thing I found helpful is if you just draw through the whole thing we can always make our lines bolder later if we need to not a problem Maybe we have some, some lid here. Perfume, cologne, whatever the case may be. The base of this. Oh, from Japan. What's up, success? On the YouTube from Japan. We've got an international show, people. Black Ross International. <laughs> Uh, we always have fun on the show, so thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of this. As you can see, I'm trying to draw through the back, meaning I have these two lines that are offset from each other. Okay, and that's going to help create the sense of depth for the sketch. Um, let's see. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to think about materials potentially, you know, for this uh, lid or cap as well. Thinking about background shadows where all of that's going to go. And of course, you want to think about things like a label, if that's going to be on your perfume. I'll just go ahead and block, block something in here. All right, for a label. I kind of wish I had made the perspective a little bit more dynamic. So I'm just going to cheat here a little bit. See if we can do that. Just with a little line weight. What's up, the Skur, Cloppy, Raul, Como estas? Naveen, what's up? Roshan, how you doing? Oh, nice. <clears throat> Is that a plugin for uh, the iPad Pro that lets you watch picture in picture? Or are you talking about Instagram? I'm curious. All right, so let's do our bottle. I'm actually going to start with the color of the perfume so whatever that is and let's let's just go with something you know golden or uh, brownish perhaps so I'm gonna just grab grab a scrap piece of paper here and just do a quick color test all right this is a yellow 10 got a yellow what's this yellow one it's a little bit much whenever you're using new markers it's always helpful to kind of take a look at them unless you are <laughs> thanks David unless you're super familiar with them and I'm not super familiar with these I mean I use them from time to time on the stream but with the Copic markers I can just pick and I just know what's gonna work he man hello London amazing what time is it in London right now it's got to be like late super late right all right yellow three okay I like this yellow three I'm gonna keep that let's see uh, yellow seven and then I want like a brown 
that one's okay. All right, not gonna use that guy. All right, so I think I'll start with the yellow three and yellow six. You guys have seen me messing around with markers enough already. Once again, if, though, if you are watching on the YouTube, you'll want to head over to, or sorry, the Instagram. Head over to youtube.com slash sketchday.com if this is your first time. So this is glass. At least that's what I'm going to try and render here. Sketch render with these these markers. So trying to identify you know where the top of this liquid is inside this vessel. And now I can kind of shade the side. And whenever I have transparent or translucent things, I like to shade over a few times. So here, the liquid on the inside. I'm going to leave the top white for now, maybe except for this back spot. And then now I can shade on the side, the corners, things like that. Okay, and just kind of build value. Contrast is gonna be your friend here if you're trying to do something like this. Keep your eyes open, pay attention to reflections and um, you know, look at objects around you and that's gonna teach you how to draw them. Aside from understanding the pure mechanics and technical aspects of lighting, opening your eyes is going to allow you to store those, what I like to call visual symbols, in your head so that you can recall those later when you want to. All right, so I've got the perfume in the bottle, so now I want to make the corners of the bottle. Depending on the color of the glass, I'm gonna go with clear. Well, maybe maybe I could do like a greenish glass or something, because um, I have green gray. Let's see. So I've got this green gray that I can use. Green gray five and three. All right. So I've got these guys, and so in the corners of the glass and the bottom here, I'm just gonna start introducing some compression artifacts. So whenever you look at glass, in the corners you tend to have a bit of contrast. You know, if there's something in the environment that's being reflected into, into the glass, you'll have that compressed. You know, if, if you're standing in front or if something's in the environment, things like that. Um, someone on the Instagram is asking, where's the Google Drive link? You have to go to sketchaday.live or youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. It's in the video description. You can check it out there. Enjoy. It actually has sketches that I've done for the last, so since January. Um, and I'm going to be erasing those soon. So you'll want to check that out. If you want some sketch samples, they're absolutely free. And I do that just so that you can see what I see as I'm sketching. And you're not like, man, that's a terrible sketch. But once again, this is Sketch Day Live. Thanks for joining. In the United States, anyways, it's Memorial Day weekend. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm staying inside. I live in an area where Seems like people are champing at the bit to uh, get out and go places, and I'm like, nah, fam. Like, nah, fam. There was my seven year old just <laughs> came in. So yeah, just introducing a few artifacts here in the corners. Like so. Yesterday I also uploaded the uh, finale, I guess, conclusion of my CAD modeling sessions that I've done in Fusion 360. So if you wanna check that out, 
feel free. Yeah, I whispered. I'm streaming. Um, feel free to uh, watch those. You know, it's a bit of a watch, but check it out. So we'll just mix some of these colors here. And now, if there's a background, we could play with having the color of the background interplay with the color of the liquid, but I'm not gonna do that today. <laughs> That's gonna take too long. All right, at this point, uh, if you're in the YouTube chat anyways, hit me up with suggestions. What would you like to see next? I'm kind of open today. Hoping to get like four or five of these done. So let's keep it simple if we can. Can I plastic bottle sketch? I'm sketching glass, so it's it's very similar. In case you're wondering. I guess I could have done those wood lines with marker, but how about we do something like, let's see, maybe something like a cherry, cherry wood. Can I make a Photoshop rendering tutorial? Actually, if you watch my YouTube, you will find plenty of stuff there. That's from the Instagram. So just, just a heads up, if you are watching Instagram, it's only gonna go for about an hour, maybe less, because I am limited in how long the stream can go. So if you wanna catch the full thing, Head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Verde is asking, how do you draw those reflections? Um, like I mentioned, you just kind of have to open your eyes, but I do have a video <laughs> on the YouTube. Take a look at, um, I think it's called, yeah, I think it's called how to, how to like light a cylinder. And there's another one about lighting objects that you can watch, check out. So yeah, if you check those out, you'll find resources specifically on lighting. The idea with the live streams is you get to see me apply the principles, the pre-recorded stuff. I'm gonna kind of keep that to the, at least this is my plan going forward making those more of the technical presentations, like how stuff works when it comes to drawing. And then the pre-recorded stuff will be like why it works that way. So why are shadows the way they are? How does line weight work? Things like that, all right? If you are interested, I do offer tutoring as well. So just hit me up with a message kind of make an assessment and then we go from there. So even in the corners here, we may have little spots that are black. So I'm just trying to take my pen, add a bit more contrast like so. And like I mentioned, we have this label. Um, the label here, I think I'm gonna make it black and then I'll just scribble some text on. Grab the wrong marker, but it's all good. It is all good. Pendant lamps, X game, Xbox control. I already have a video on Xbox controller. <laughs> Roshan, are you just trolling me today? I don't know why Roshan watches. He's he's way. He's really good. <laughs> really, really good. You don't need to be watching, dude. What's up, Lou? Okay, so I'm just taking a white pen now that I've shaded that in as black. I don't really want to make a logo. Hmm, what should we call this? 
need some sort of brand. I'll finish up some other stuff while, while I think on it. What is this, cool gray seven, I need something darker. Boom. You know, I was really excited this summer. I was planning to go live somewhere else in the world. And then all this COVID stuff happened and I'm like, man, like I was, I was thinking about moving to Europe or uh, going to like South Africa or something for the duration of summer. I'm pretty bummed about that. <coughs> really stinks. Okay, so on the top, I think I'm gonna make that like a black but shiny. Something like that. Now I can take a nice light gray and create a subtle gradient on the inside. Or you could use a pencil. That's another way to do it. Maybe I'll do that just to show you guys what that looks like. Although I think I put away all my pencils. Just a sec. Sometimes when you clean up, you clean up too well. That was my case yesterday. Cleaned up the studio. Got to interview my first boss online. That was fun. Super, super fun. Kind of hear him tell his des design philosophy, stories, all that stuff. That was when I worked at Astro Studios in San Francisco. back in the day. I should also mention, <laughs> I've been getting more requests uh, lately for, um, you know, hey, can I can I buy a sketch, whatever. If, if you're interested in that, there is a way. Just hit me up. I know Luke's, Luke's gotten some, I'm just faking the shadow here in the back. Um, Luke's gotten some stuff in the past. Um, and recently we had someone on Instagram pick something up, so. Let me know. Moving or holiday? Let's see. Roshan, I'm watching for the same reason you're sketching. Always room for improvement. Ah. <laughs> True. I feel like in life, if you feel like you've made it and there's nothing else to learn, you have failed. Because <laughs> there's so much to learn, so much to do. But yeah, remember, contrast is your friend. So squint your eyes, look at your drawing. It'll help you. I'm just gonna shade in the shadow here light, or not shadow, but reflection. Just to kind of get, get things going. Let's see, set an angle, incidence. You may have a little bit of that, but I'm gonna ignore, I'm gonna cheat and ignore the reflection of the wood right now, just because it would be very, very intense. Figure that out. But little things like this will help. Just adding. Adding a little bit of a reflection of this top portion. You know, sketching isn't about, at least I think, depends on who you talk to, but <laughs> sketching isn't about creating an exact replica of something, but more so capturing the essence of it. And that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, so the logo. I have no idea what to put there. I guess I could put Chanel or something. What's up, Abhishek? Exploded view of a watch with a brown leather band. Oh my goodness, David. You're killing me, Smalls. We got lots of suggestions. This is awesome. Okay, let me just add some white stuff. I think I have enough suggestions here to go for. If I don't get to your idea, it's not because I hate you or anything. I might hate the idea. Just kidding. No, nothing but love. <laughs> okay, a couple little dots here just for texture. Again, if you use a white pen and you feel like something's too intense, you can always let it dry and then go over it with marker. And it should help mute things. Uh, I'm just gonna do a scribble logo. 
because I don't want to I don't want to figure out a logo there <clears throat> and then on the ground we'll just take some very light yellow just to create a little bit of caustic and cast on the ground here just pale yellow when in doubt rough it out and light until you get it right that's the name of the game okay One of the things I found helpful with drawing too is actually doing photography. So if if you get into photography or even doing things like uh, renderings, kind of helps you figure things out, the mechanics of things as you study that, become more aware of what's happening, it then becomes easier to kind of manipulate and draw what you want. All right, let's see, just a small hint of reflection here. You can keep touching things up if you need, you know, just a little pencil for texture on the surface, for example, you can do that just so things don't feel as flat as they might otherwise. All right, something like that. Since, since the parfum, perfume is yellow, I like to kind of have some of the light also refracting in the perimeter or thickness of the glass. I always find that that kind of helps it feel a bit more credible as a sketch. And I'm just going to take this brush pen now and clean up the bottom. Just like that. Okay, so that's our first sketch today. I'm just gonna sign this guy. As a reminder, this will be available on the Google Drive as a downloadable. So that link is in the YouTube video description. Once again, check that out if you're interested. Should we do everything yellow today? <laughs> All right, I got a request for a laptop from our Patreon, Tom. So I think I'll do that real quick. I used to sketch a lot of laptops back in the day. Um, I'm running out of space already. I used to sketch a lot of laptops back in the day. Laptops are hard, but I'm just gonna keep this one just kind of simple. A lot of times too, when we did laptops, we wouldn't necessarily figure out all the um, details of everything because so much, because they're so thin, so much was figured out in the engineering process. You kind of gave broad stroke ideas, particularly when it comes to say a pen sketch. It's really, really, I mean, you'd have to draw really big um, same goes for phones nowadays. I started out drawing flip phones, and those are easy because they're chunky. But something like a laptop, where it's super thin, it's a little harder to do that. So here, for example, on the YouTube, it's really hard to see, but I can zoom in at least. So right here on the hinge, 
my camera's gonna freak out. Okay, right there on the hinge, I'm trying to just hint at, you know, maybe some speaker perf, for example, being in line with whatever this crazy hinge is. You know, maybe this is more of a gaming or multimedia laptop or something. Put some vents on the side. Someone is asking, did I say yes to a tutorial in India? I do workshops all over, um, particularly now as we are in this phase of, okay, so the keyboard, I'll get back to what I was just saying. The keyboard I usually just draw some lines on and you know, there's a shift key, a few other things, but it's okay to just throw some lines on. This whole area, I'm just gonna Oh yeah, and the space bar, you wanna get that. This, that's fairly consistent, or directional arrow keys. Yeah, I used to do a lot of laptops for HP and Dell, um, concepts for other companies as well. Yeah, I'll just kinda of fake it in, just because, well one, I don't have the desire or time to map out every key so create the general effect same goes for the screen general effect you know maybe it's some bezel-less crazy design and on the screen I'm just gonna throw in a big reflection All right, so suggesting that this is being lit from the top. So we're gonna have a, um, you know, a bit of glare reflection. Sometimes you can come in on the other side as well. Just leave a little area and then shade the rest of it in as black or whatever. Sketch suggestion, exploded view of a subject of your choice. Eh, I did that last time. Not last time, but two times ago. But I could, I could do a watch again. All right, so here, let's switch to some neutral grays. If I can find them, neutral gray seven, six, and I should have a three somewhere. Yep, right there. So just using neutral gray for this one. Um, so here on the body side, I know that's gonna be darker anyway, so on the top, We'll just shade in. And I'm gonna try and play off this kind of lighting situation here. But it's not gonna be at the same angle. Whether it you know, whether it goes more this way or that way. I'm trying to think. It just depends on the position of light, so here. I'm just gonna shade over the sketch. We'll get back to the keys, trackpad, all of that. But on the keys, you can just kind of hit these divisions with that gray marker. Like so. I'm gonna go for some contrast in material as well. So maybe this hinge section here is a different material <clears throat> than the rest of the laptop. Leave that nice and white for contrast. Same thing on the screen, so, except I'm gonna use a darker marker on the screen actually. Because in this case, my screen is off. Bottle of motor oil with a handle was another suggestion. This is gonna be the most random show ever. I thought last week or last show was random where I did a makeup compact, a purse, and what else did I do? Makeup compact, purse, oh, a 3D printer. But this might be the most random show. 
Trying to move fast, though. Or faster. Normally, at this point, I'm like one sketch in, so I'm feeling good. Let's go. What was I saying again? Oh, yeah, I was saying... <laughs> I was saying I wanted to go live somewhere else <clears throat> for the summer. And then I'm bummed or sad that because of COVID, I can't really travel. I was supposed to do a series of workshops in Mexico as well, but that is being converted to an online presentation. That should be fine. I'm also emceeing or hosting a conference but that's going to be online that's, it's all just going to be interesting we'll see see what this all means and where it leads certainly oh sorry Roshan <clears throat> thanks for the heads up I'm now unzoomed um, so the keys, we can do white or you can do black for the letters on the keys, whatever. Um, I'll just kind of scribble some stuff here. Just kind of hint, but not be so specific as to, hey, this is A, F1 through whatever. Because a lot of these, like I said, a lot of these things are designed in isolation. Not isolation, but um, in the right context and scale. And so you kind of have to, when you're sketching, pick your battle, so to speak, and say, what's the purpose of the sketch? If the purpose of the sketch is to show the overall look of the thing, this is totally fine. If the purpose of the sketch is to explore the detail of the thing, then yeah, you need to zoom in and show that thing. So if I was designing this keyboard, I'd probably first do an orthographic or dead on view figure out the layout, design of the buttons, shapes, and so forth, and then, if necessary, because it's not always necessary, then, if necessary, you do a perspective view. All right, so that's kind of how it works. Thank you, Vegeta. A water bottle for traveling. Does it kick in right now? Autofocus? What's happening? Okay, I think I'm good. Either way, appreciate the feedback. <laughs> Always learning and trying to make the stream and the channel better. I feel like it's come a long way since uh, September, since I started this. So I appreciate all the feedback you guys have given here and there. And now I'm just going to add a shadow. Maybe some texture, we'll call it good. So this is called a motor stroke or hatching, some people call it. But if you pay attention, what I'm actually doing is I'm drawing a line, lifting my hand, and then drawing the next line. So I'm not just scrubbing back and forth, okay? It's very subtle, but it, this way you draw your lines parallel to each other rather than creating just another scribble on the page. I'm trying to use my elbow in this instance, not my shoulder so much. Rotate the paper to whatever is comfortable for you. And we'll add some line weight to the bottom here just to help it pop. Maybe a light background and we'll call it good. So just a heads up, I've been working on some brushes for Photoshop. I think I was I was hoping to release them today, but I was so tired last night that I didn't quite get everything I wanted to get done. But stay tuned, that'll be coming out this weekend. Brushes for Photoshop, a few of you have asked. In fact, I've had people buy the Procreate brushes that I make thinking they worked for Photoshop and then asking me to make them or 
some similar brushes for Photoshop. So that's what I that's what I've been working on a bit here and there. We're gonna do yellow everything today. Everything has the color yellow, so maybe that's the theme. <laughs> yellow background. All right, I got a request for a Hellman, got a request for an Exploded View watch. You know, the watch is an interesting one because I don't know exactly what's inside the watch. So I could probably uh, explode the screen and a few other things, but that's it. So I'm not super confident on the watch, David. That's my only problem with that one. So I may do a helmet first and then, and then we can come back. Yeah, so there you go, laptop, it's all gray. <laughs> They're not the uh, most fun thing to draw, sketch, whatever, just because they are pretty simple, very thin. Um, so yeah, you don't, get, you, you don't get a ton there. All right, so there's our second yellow sketch of the day. We did a laptop, we did our little perfume bottle here. So now, Let's switch to a helmet of sorts. Um, I actually was wanting to draw a helmet and thinking a little bit about what that might look like. You know, just a, just a little bit. On my run this morning, actually, I was thinking about it. Um, but I was, I was thinking, what if, what if you faceted the whole thing? That would be kind of cool. I'm sure it's been done before, but wanted to maybe do something kind of tessellated, perhaps. So I can kind of start with a thumbnail like this. Kind of figure out where some of these points are. It's probably going to be another line there. Let's see, something like that. Side. So side views are helpful if you're trying to figure out the design of something. Um, I'm not saying this is totally accurate or complete, but enough of a thumbnail to say, okay, I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. Let me go do it now. So we'll just keep that on the page. All right, <clears throat> what about smart watches? Yeah, I could do a smart watch, I guess. A lot of tiny cogs. Yeah, if I, if I do a, an analog watch, it's just gonna be tons of little cogs and that would be freaking annoying. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So I'm just gonna start by sketching out kind of the midsection shape of the helmet, maybe a line at the top, and then indicate where my um, side straps are gonna be. And I'm running out of page page space here, so let's let's just cheat a little bit. And now I'm gonna start picking a few points and just drawing drawing my form here. Let's see, something like this. Center line being about here, okay? So <clears throat> depending on how this is tessellated or what you wanna do, I um, think I'm gonna go with something like this for my triangles, which may look weird. Ah, I'll just add a little return there and that kinda helps finish it off.
I probably should have sketched this on a bigger piece of paper or done it a little bit smaller, but we'll just roll with it. No gray lines here, just, just trying to sketch freestyle. Sometimes, you know, I've, I've been having this thought lately that there are good things about hard things and <laughs> sketching without, you know, gray marker is really hard. But it's forcing me to really think about what's happening and make those critical decisions. Certainly I can overlay this if I really wanted to, but Keep it as is for now. Oh, you were just pushing my limits, David. Okay, okay, fair enough. I was like, man, I really want to sketch this for David, but it's gonna take some time. All right, so we were we were working with yellow and gray, so we'll keep that up, keep that going. I actually want to tweak the proportion here a little bit. It feels off, like maybe this needs to be more like that in the back. Yeah, that feels better. And then this panel here on the back, I'm gonna cut out and then add. So I'll make that gray, the rest of this yellow padding. I may modify this, you know, just planning on a background here some sort and I can clean some stuff up with the background so yeah, and this needs to come down as well yeah that feels a little bit better it's still a little squished but part of it's just the size of the paper that I have and I didn't plan I didn't plan it out well enough I also like to point out where I feel I've made mistakes so that you guys can learn from those mistakes. So I'm not ever saying my stuff is perfect, the end. So I hope you understand that. <clears throat> this is just raw, real, live sketching, how you work through those problems and make things work. All right, so picking a lighting scheme, I'm gonna pick light coming from this direction. So. Everything away from this is going to be a bit more shadowed, but let's go ahead and kind of outline our triangles here. Something like that on the far side. Just going to start shading these in. The idea being I want to show that the light's most intense at this point, okay, and this surface is facing away from the light, but it's also going to get reflected light as well. <clears throat> Let's see, do I have a lighter yellow? certainly have darker, so we'll go with darker. Just start building these values up. So as I added this yellow line here, I was trying to be careful not to hit the perimeter of the sketch because I can leverage that as sort of a rim or secondary light in my sketch scene as I'm shading in this helmet. That CAD guy is asking, what books would you recommend a beginner to read? Um, so one of my favorite books is How to Draw by Scott Robertson. Um, let's see, if you're looking at the 
YouTube here. It's that book in the corner of my room. Um, but check that out, and you'll be able to... Like, he kind of, he breaks down a lot of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm also working on a, I'll just say, a little project myself that I hope to finish this summer um, that you'll find helpful. I'll just put it that way. All right, so I got a nice light yellow here that I can use. Yeah, that's working. So, like I said, I just want to create kind of a blend to this light spot um, right here. If you're trying to blend markers, you want to make sure you're using a good marker paper. This is Bianio marker paper that I found on Amazon, and it's pretty good. Um, some people like the Canson marker paper as well. Just find one that works for you, but more importantly, if you find a good marker paper, it will keep your markers alive longer. What's up, Milos? It'll keep your markers alive longer. I always tell this story, but I met Milos. Um, I was walking in San Francisco one day, just minding my own business, and I just hear, Spencer! Spencer! I'm like, what? Who? I don't. I'm, I don't. I'm not anticipating running into anyone. Anyhow, so Milos runs up and he's like, "Hey, man, I'm a fan. Been following you for a while." I'm like, "Hey." <laughs> Anyhow, he was awesome and uh, he's always been super supportive. So, what's up, dude? I always tell people that story because it was just so like out of the blue it's like what all right so now i need to get a little bit darker on this side okay I'm trying to create that three-dimensional shape ah this will work yellow is a tough one it's tough to photograph it's tough to sketch because you kind of have to be willing to go brown in some instances, right? So like on this perimeter here, or even in this shadowed area. Sometimes brown, sometimes reddish, just kind of depends. <clears throat> All right, so now let's add some gray. And we'll get this get this thing cooking. So like I said, I wanted this part here to be gray. Thanks, Milos. Good to see you're still, still working. I've seen your stuff on LinkedIn, little experiments. I think that's awesome. I do love how creative everyone, like even normal people, friends of mine, everyone just seems to be that much more creative right now and creating things. It's kind of cool. Now is the time of the designer, I think. Get creative. Don't just sit there and wait for someone to fix your problems. Ashim is asking if I can sketch a sneaker. Maybe. I feel like I do that a lot. So I'm trying to just do some different stuff today for you guys. Do a quick sort here because I'm missing my neutral gray. I need to make sure I have it. Neutral gray three. Where are you? Hey, found you. I 
It really doesn't matter so much what markers you use as it does how you use your markers. I did a sketch, I think it was last week, with actually crayons, kids' crayons, my kids' crayons. Did a computer mouse, and I mean, it wasn't my best work I've ever done, but I wanted to see if you could take the principles and apply them to a tool and see what happened. And sure enough, yeah, I was able to do it. I did a decent uh, product design sketch render of this mouse. At least I think it was decent. You guys let me know. <laughs> it was actually one of my most well-received posts that I've done, so <laughs> top nine is gonna be interesting this year. Thanks, Roshan. I still don't know why you're watching. Just kidding. I'm just giving you crap. Roshan's awesome. You can check out his stream. At the end of the stream, I'll give you guys a chance to shout out whatever it is you're up to. You can post links, whatever. Say what's up. At least I think that's allowed. All right, so I want to create a texture on the back here. I'm just gonna use my white pencil like so and just placing some dots you want your pencil to be the last thing you do okay now obviously this is well, I shouldn't say obviously typically <laughs> as a product designer this is something you'd figure out in CAD meaning you know once I sketch this idea then I can jump into 3d and go, okay, what's exactly this relationship with these dots? What's that going to look like? All of that stuff <clears throat> to make sure that it works. So this is just more of, hey, how can we capture the overall effect we're after? And I just want to add well, not pass-through holes, but rather just little divots, D-I-V-O-T, divots in the surface. Yeah, Insta, I think, I think your time's going to be up here in just a sec. And now, with a little white pen, I can add a little highlight. So I added, so we started with the white, use Sharpie to make a dark spot in the middle. And then, now with this white pen, a little bit more contrast, and now they feel like kind of holes in the back. Um, so I will say, Instagrammers, if you want to catch the rest, I'm I'm feeling good. I'm cooking today, so I'll probably do two, three more sketches. If you want to catch that, head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com, and that's where you will find the rest of the stream. All right, so if this ends, you know where to find me. And definitely subscribe. If you subscribe, hit the bell. You won't miss when when I go live three times a week maybe more soon I'm thinking about it yep that Instagram feed just ended so all right I think there was a request let's see a tablet I don't really want to do a tablet just because I did a laptop already um, Luca Water bottle for traveling, I could do that. Travel water bottle. Uh, oil can, let's see. I could do another watch again. All right. Okay, give me just a sec here, guys. I'm not sure if Instagram will delete my video if I don't, like, accept it right now, so. And now my phone's frozen. Hopefully I didn't lose all that, but if I did, you know where to get it. You know where to go. Yeah, my phone's freaking out. So we 
have watch, fridge. <laughs> fridge is an interesting one. Okay. My phone has awakened. Yeah, I think I lost that live. Oh well. This is why you want to subscribe to the YouTube. This is also why I need to hit record. I forgot. All right, boom. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just add a little yellow there on the outside. Okay, I'm just squinting my eyes a little bit because I want to make sure I have enough contrast here. And I see some areas for improvement on the front, um, particularly as we move away from the light. So let me address that real quick. This yellow is too light. Okay, so I think I need, let's try yellow 35. Yeah, yellow, yellow is a really hard color, I think, to work with when you're rendering. Even digitally, it's just really hard. So in instances like this where I can't quite get the right yellow, sometimes I'll take a colored pencil. Or you can take uh, like a black pencil too. I'm just going to try and find a brown pencil here. Or just something like a deep, dark orange. Either way. Ah. And so now, I can just shade over these panels to get the lighting effect that I want. Okay, and the marker just has a nice base to it. It does add a little texture, so if you're going for something glossy, you know, you'll want to Try and smooth that out a little bit. Or just let those sketch lines show, either way. Yeah, I think I lost the live um, on Insta, so <clears throat> what I'll do is just upload one segment from the live here, so those yahoos can have some of it, some of that good good. All right, <clears throat> whenever I have uh, mistakes or things like that, I like to just kind of cover it up with black, so I have this wide Copic marker that I can use. And we'll just make this background chunk black. And if I'm careful and back off the sketch, I still have the separation and support of this background element, meaning it's not overpowering the sketch. It's got some breathing room to it. So you can be careful with it, you know, use your marker at an angle, things like that. And if you want to get creative about how you finish that off, you can as well. So I'll just keep it kind of sketchy under there, like so. I will say the marker brush set I've created in Photoshop is pretty dope, <laughs> meaning cool, if you have no idea what I mean by dope. So look forward to that. At least I, I've been enjoying using them. And on the ground here, I'm just going to add a little shadow using a gray marker.
a little something there. And let's see. I like to I like to have logos on things. So just some some sort of scribble logo text on my helmet. All right. So that's our third yellow sketch today. <laughs> we did our perfume bottle. This laptop with a yellow background. Helmet. Boom. Tom is asking, how hard is it to make a good brush? Um, I put a lot of time and effort and love into a brush. I think what makes a brush different is in a lot of ways the creator of the brush so like Roshan has some brushes and his brushes are like literally his style in a package um, my approach tends to be a bit more agnostic to style and so I create tools that I think are the best approximation of um, what I consider to be good digital sketching so everyone has a different approach um, when I do it though I'm gonna do a watch guys <clears throat> when I do it though I, let's see, how do I want to do this watch? When I do it, I'll actually sample textures from real life. I'm not saying Roshan doesn't. I'm just describing my process to be very clear here. I don't want to upset anyone. I've been upsetting people all week. Um, but I like to... This is like some chunky Mark Newson style thing. Um, I like to take pictures of real things. I'll take real watercolor ink, for example, and use that to then create the what's called the stamp <clears throat> or sample. And there's an art to that as far as how you sample those things. Um, there's a certain art to that for sure. So yeah, in, in a lot of ways, it's it's challenging, particularly time consuming. Like on Tuesday, I sat in this chair that I'm sitting in for like, I swear it was like 12 hours. I was just going hard, my poor kids. But I was committed to just getting it done. I'm just gonna do a simple watch face, guys. Um, I was committed to just getting it done, so. will be done I like giant crowns on watches I know it's ridiculous but I do love a good giant crown this thing in case you're wondering what I mean obnoxious details as well as I've been uh, designing for for a while now I'm trying I'm starting to realize or come into the fact that I do have a certain aesthetic approach. I like simple, but I like chunky as well. So like chunky funky. So this project I'm working on, this lighting related project that I'll show you guys eventually. A lot of stuff is chunky and funky for that project. But I like it. I feel like it takes, takes time as a designer to kind of come into your own and figure out what your aesthetic is, meaning what's your visual approach. That's not to say you can't be flexible. Certainly as a consultant, which is what I do, among other things, you kind of have to be flexible. All right, let's make this band leather. Just a little cheat on the back here for this ellipse eagle eyes would have caught it. All right. So 
So I don't have a watch in front of me, so I'm not, and I don't wear watches with straps that buckle like this, so I'm just kind of going off memory here and hoping that the right strap is in the right place. I don't even know what this part's called, but keeps the strap here from flopping out. Yeah, possibly Tom, but life's short. Can't get upset about everything, right? Thanks for joining me on Sketch Day Live. If, if you've never joined before, I do this at least three times a week, hoping to do it more, where I kind of just hang out, draw, chat, take suggestions from you guys. I guess today's theme is just yellow. That's what I'm, that's what I've kind of settled on we're going with, doing lots of quick marker sketches. I did have a request last time for a doodle style. Doodle. D-O-O-D-L-E. So I could do that on one of these. Or even over, actually what I'll do is overlay this after I'm done and show you the difference and kind of how, how I would approach that different style of sketching. Some stitches here. Real quick, quick and dirty, fast. When I was in school, my professor, he told us something that's kind of stuck with me over the years. The best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of them. So I like to sketch fast when I can, sketch a lot. All that good stuff. All right, let's do the case real quick. <clears throat> And how about we make this, hmm. I could do black and then chrome for the trim. Or something dark on the back, I should say. This is just a neutral gray seven. Which means I can go lighter or darker if I need to. Now for the trim, I'm just gonna take this cool gray. The clo part closest to the buckle which keeps the strap down is called a keeper. The second is called a free loop. Okay, thanks Roshan. Did you design a ton of watches or you just love watches? I just have my Apple Watch, that's all I, <laughs> all I use. I used to collect watches and then, you know, Apple Watch happened and now my watches sit in a box somewhere. Yes, I'm an Apple guy. Okay, but like I said, the theme is yellow today just by default. So let's do a yellow face. I was gonna do a leather strap actually. Svetlana, welcome, welcome back. Thank you so much for the suggestions last time. Almost done with my Photoshop brushes, I was telling everyone, so check those out soon. All right, a little bit of gray here for these details. I actually would, I would wear the hell out of this watch. <laughs> Again, it's, um, it's that funky, chunky aesthetic, like I was saying, that I like. I forgot to refill my marker from last stream. So maybe we'll make it a thing where every stream I refill a marker and you guys get to see me do it. So once again, <laughs> why I love Copic markers, I can...
take the nib out and then actually I should do this over a scrap piece of paper so I don't wreck my drawing but place a few drops in here I'm gonna make this one juicy though Alright, and usually, I mean, you, you can get what's called a booster. It's like this long needle that you screw on and then you shove shove it down in there. Alright. You kind of see it's getting a little little moist. And on this tip, I'm actually going to put a couple drops in here just to revive it. And then now, just push that in. My markers refilled just like that so one of these bottles will refill your marker I think 11 or 12 times something crazy like that so that's why I, that's why I love these Copic markers okay I'm not gonna do an alligator skin strap that took forever <laughs> last time and I'm trying to get uh, Oh, okay. Roshan designed one as a student. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get a ton of sketches out today. Just, I'm feeling. I'm feeling good. So why not? All right. Kind of scrubbing in a all-over pattern here. This is just going to give the the strap some texture. And as I come over this spot that I shaded already, it should make it a little bit darker as well. All right, you can do the same thing here. Shadow core, highlight. All right, so <clears throat> if you think about the elements of whatever you're sketching in terms of primitives, it makes it really easy. You know, here's a if you were to consider the cross section of the body here, that's going to determine the way the light flows here on these. Let me refer to what Roshan said. This is a free loop. <laughs> so right by the free loop, right? Just a little bit of darker marker there gives me a shadow. And then I can just scrub this one time. Markers are translucent. The ink is anyway. So remember, you can build up. You can build up opacity with the marker. So going back to Tom's question about making brushes, yeah, understanding how real tools work totally helps too. So that's why I think if you have if you have experience drawing, it makes it easy to um, make those brushes. But if you have no idea what you're doing, then it's a lot harder. So when I started making brushes back in college, and I actually used those brushes for a long time, but the ones I make now are just way better because you just have a better, I'm going to cheat right there. You have a better understanding of how your tools work, how you draw, all that good stuff. So Sketch a Day Live, thanks for joining. The theme today is yellow. <laughs> Straight up, just yellow. That's the theme. So add some contrast here. This one I'm just going to keep gray. And the same goes for drawing. If you understand the mechanics of things like light and form and shape, it makes break the rules, so to speak. So typically, if you're buying a set of brushes, buy it from someone who knows how to draw really well, because chances are they're going to put all of those qualities, those lessons learned over years into the way that tool behaves, right? It's also a great way to support your artists if you if they release brushes and you pick them up. Um, I know Roshan has a set coming out soon, so if you're a fan of his, check out his Instagram. I think it's just at Roshan Hakim, so you can check that out. But 
that's my that's my spiel on on brushes for you guys today. Do you guys like Avatar: The Last Airbender? I'm trying to get into it, but I'm really struggling. That main character kid, I'm just like, you're really annoying. I know, controversial opinion, because everyone's watching it right now. At least not everyone, but I have a lot of friends watching it. So I tried to watch it with my kids, but man, I'm struggling. I think it's because I, I grew up on Dragon Ball, and I watched Dragon Ball Super, which was awesome. Loved it. So yeah, I don't watch a ton of TV, but <clears throat> if I'm going to watch TV, I want to make sure it's something really good. Vegeta is asking, can I make a drawing or make a video about drawing circles in different perspectives? You're in luck, my friend. I have a YouTube at, that you're on <laughs> with 300 videos. Um, so I'm happy to, I'll, I'll actually just pull it up here. There's a really popular video I did a few years ago. Uh, I don't know why it's so popular, but every month people watch it. Um, so a circle in perspective is called an ellipse. All right, so I'm gonna send you two videos in chat here. So there's one. So you can check those out if you want to draw circles in perspective. All right, let's wrap this. Uh, yeah, I've got time for like two or three more sketches. So I'm trying to remember what suggestions were given. For life, watch for life. Okay, I will check it out. Is that animated? Is it a drama? What is it? And when I watch TV, I usually watch it if I'm like while I'm working on something. It'll just kind of be playing in the background, which probably sets a terrible example for my. That's how we do. Oh shoot! Okay, I need to. There you are. I love this pen. <clears throat> it's a Fa Faber Castle. Faber Castle. Uh, pit artist pen <clears throat> and I like it because it's not super opaque it's water-based white ink I know I promised a video on white inks I'll be sure to get to that so leather typically you'll have some creases things like that happening so I'm just trying to capture that also highlight some edges here stitches okay I can just do that with this pen. Super handy. Because it's not as opaque as the other inks that I use. So it's good in between. Now on the face itself, if I want to make things really pop, you know, in some of these chrome areas or whatever, or it might be the edge of the glass, I can use my opaque white ink to kind of help that out. And just to finish out the whole thing, a little bit of line weight to kind of help. Uh, I would like to buy these smart watches if they'd be real. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Fetlana. Of course, we're going to do our Scribble logo like we always do. Um, and I mentioned this one just being kind of a supporting sketch. So whenever that's the case, I like to just use a little gray marker to kind of hit Hit it a little bit, enough to maybe show a little form. Call it good, you can even add a little bit of a shadow here on the outside and then punch the line weight just a little bit more. <clears throat> Stay on this side. Okay, and now that has its own presence, overwhelming our main sketch here. Uh, 
Adding a shadow can help the sketch pop as well. All right, we can add notes. Leather, I do have a video on how to make notes in your sketch as well. That's a weird arrow, but I'll, I'll keep it. Crown, uh, I think Roshan said this was called a keeper. Not typically how I would annotate a sketch, but just want to show you the visual impact of annotating a sketch <clears throat> and how it can help that sketch just feel richer. It's also a way to invite people to look at your sketch because what you're suggesting with a note is that there's something of value here, something worth noting, <laughs> seeing for lack of a better, better word. All right, so two, two freehand watch sketches. Now, I did have that question about the doodle style, like if you want to sketch a little bit slower, how does that go? Um, I'll just show you. So let's take this sketch and let's say we were to overlay this sketch and we wanted to make some tweaks to it. Maybe it's a more of a smartwatch or something. So in an instant like, instance like this, where you just want a nice clean sketch, I don't usually trace, but it is a style. There's a few people online that do this, this kind of thing. All right, so just go a little bit slower. And it has its own, I'm, particular, I'm particularly not as much a fan of it, but if you do want a clean drawing, that's one way to go. Right, and you just kind of work your way around using what's called a whole line, W-H-O-L-E. So you might see a sketch, something like this. See, my hand's even too shaky for it, but One mistake, but I think we can recover. But yeah, it's definitely a much slower approach. As you can see. Almost meditative, actually. <laughs> um, just forcing me to think about where all these lines go, what's happening, and all of that. I'll just make a little change here to my crown. But you can see too, the energy of the sketch is also different. So I prefer the much higher energy of just a fast sketch, even if it's rough, to something like this. But it does work well if you're, you know, trying to show like a step by step or something that's maybe more of a diagrammatic informational sketch. And I know like, uh, so one of the people that does this, Hector Silva on Instagram, he'll, he'll do several overlays. 
of this. Like, even looking at the front here, I'm like, eh. It's not exactly right or what I want. So I'll probably do an overlay. So I forget who asked, but hopefully this answers your question about how to do one of these slower line drawings. It is cleaner in a sense, but also, like I mentioned, the energy is just different in this sketch as compared to the main sketch that we did. And I'll, I'll just wrap up here and I can compare and show you. Okay, so there's the original sketch and there's the cleaned up version. Um, like I talked about energy and how engaging a sketch can be. Some of that is just carried through the types of lines you use. And here, going a little bit slower, I don't feel like it's as energetic as, say, the sketch on the right. I'll just add a little bit of gray which is also something you'll see in this style, just a hint of color, but not necessarily full rendering. If you want to sketch slower, it's it's something you can do. All right. So there you go. We've got our doodle sketch on the left and kind of our our quicker sketch on the right. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what else what else do we got in the channel? So we've done a watch now. Quick recap once more for the laptop. Kick things off with our perfume bottle and also did a helmet. Okay, so I think we, yeah, we got time for like one or two more sketches here. So let's, let me check the chat. Uh, oh, vacuum cleaner. Okay, I can do a vacuum cleaner. This is lo-fi music. I am, I actually have a friend who is going to be making me some custom music for the channel. So there'll be some changes soon. I'm super excited for it. All right, so the request was to sketch a vacuum cleaner. So we're gonna start with two wheels and we have this general shape on the ground as well. I'm just gonna come down like so. And the front of the vacuum cleaner, we'll do something like that. Why is everything ang angular today? <laughs> I'm not sure. So just starting with that frame, it gives you enough idea or sense of perspective that makes it easy to draw what you need. All right, so now we need some sort of bag or container on this thing. All right. So I'll just do something like this, maybe a bit of the the hose on the back. And then for the handle portion, 
Let's back off a little bit. I'm going to come up. All right, so maybe something like that. And now I start thinking about, okay, I probably need some sort of release mechanism. For this canister. I think mo are most vacuum cleaners uh, bagless these days? I remember one of my least favorite things growing up was my mom. She would have us empty the vacuum cleaner. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. All right, so there's our hose, and I'm going to show a little bit more of the hose coming up here as well. Because, you know, maybe you've got some tool for cleaning those crevasses that's attached underneath nice and snug. Some bristles. This little loop handle here. And I'm going to put the power button in the loop. So if you're pushing it, maybe maybe that's just the way to turn it on right there. All right, so something like that. And let's see if we can pull in some of these design elements. So we have a loop on the handle. Maybe there's a loop here on the side. Instead, so I can pull that in and maybe curve this up instead of being so angular. Just a nice surface detail, perhaps. Transition opportunity there. I think we got we have a nice shape yeah I have I, I have a Dyson is, is every de, is every designer required to have a Dyson Roshan is that like a thing do you know I'm curious I have three Dyson's <laughs> so I have three yeah I do have three Dyson's long story on that one but I actually bought a Dyson vacuum cleaner once in my sleep it shows up at my house, so I'm like, all right, I bought a Dyson, cool. All right. So yeah, maybe something like that. <clears throat> it was $400, Tom. <laughs> and I wake up and a Bison, uh, it's not a Bison, a, a Dyson shows up and I'm like, uh, all right, let's, let's go, let's do it. Okay, everything yellow today. Yellow and gray, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna use yellow for my accent colors. You know, this loop is maybe something signature to the design. So I'm just gonna highlight these loops. Okay, so now we have, okay, there's a flow going on. Cool. You can even turn this one into a loop where a button is. All right, and then the rest of this, we'll just, you know, keep it simple, dark gray, light gray, things like that. I may, yeah, I think I'll do yellow here as well, just on this little, little piece. And the tires I'll keep, keep those gray. Do yellow on the inside, a little structure. LG vacuum cleaner project is that what is that what you mean I did an LG competition once a long time ago I think 
I won something for it too. Back when I used to do design competitions. All right, a little bit of gray here, boom. All right, so now we need contrast, right? I have some values here, I need some contrast. I'm using cool gray, so I just wanna make sure it's the same thing, not jumping to neutral gray here. Need some contrast so like on the inside here just taking the brush tip of the marker maybe on some of these glass or not glass but plastic edges where we have part separations the inside of the wheel down on the ground on the inside of my loop here down toward the front so now it's starting to you can see that the hose too I'm just gonna make that gray So, maybe this little tool as well. All right, now I'm just gonna take a cool gray five, start to work that contrast a bit more where we need it. Just like so. No, I didn't win a Dyson back. I bought one accidentally, <laughs> is what happened. And I just decided to keep it. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know if you ever shop online late at night or while you're half asleep, but I guess I was that day. So yeah, that's what happened. As the motor is down here, maybe we've got some vents just in this little yellow area down here. Let's create some separation between the wheel and the body just a little bit. Put our logo on the front. done here what's after the vacuum cleaner this will be our last sketch whatever's next is the last sketch what have you missed Matt you missed so much <laughs> welcome though <laughs> today's theme is yellow because I didn't really have a theme and I just felt like using yellow so that's one thing you missed sketched a bunch already don't worry I will recap at the end Right. Let's throw a quick shadow here. Again, not really calculating this one, but enough to say there is light. All right. Now, one thing you can do for sketches like this too is if you do want to explain something or show two states, you can do that on the same page. So here, you know, our dust, dust bin, you can sketch that off. Where maybe this, this yellow piece flips up or something. 
Yeah, so maybe you pull on this and it releases. Apartment, so that's how you remove it. So you could add something like that to your sketch if you need to tell a story. Yellow Lego Man. Let's draw through the other side here. Sure, a little dust thing or whatever filter situations happening. Very Dyson-esque. And of course, if you were trying to explain what's happening, you'd wanna add some text showing what's happening so um, or you can add a hand if that's something you wanted to do or needed to do to add the context to your sketch you can certainly do that all right so there's our vacuum cleaner um, just to catch Matt up he just joined we did a helmet today Matt we've done a perfume bottle laptop that Tom requested we also did a watch two ways so there's the first fast there's a second a little slower no yellow on this one though we gotta add some yellow we gotta add some yellow everything yellow I'll just do the face yellow since we had that before but yeah someone was asking me how to do a slower drawing style so this was my attempt at that I don't draw super slow though usually I did for a minute in school but I much prefer the quicker quicker sketching And there's our vacuum. Okay, Roshan wants me to draw a yellow Lego man with a black Ross head. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I've done one before. Um, <laughs> should we do it in perspective or do you want to do the Lego man dead on? I got, let's see, I've got about five minutes. So this one's gonna be fast. All right, <clears throat> perspective here. I haven't done one of these in a while. Oh, too, too, too big a sketch. If it's gonna have a Black Ross head. I think I finished, no, I finished my, my marker paper book. It's a good thing I have some more. It's a good thing I, I just bought some more. I'm not gonna get to the bottle of motor oil, Okan. I'm sorry. Sorry, I missed that one, but uh, I may consider doing it for a future live stream or pre-recorded. Just let me know. Shoot me an email, a message. I didn't mean to ignore ignore your request. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Fresh marker pad. Smells good too. Whew. All right. <clears throat> so I think I need to start with the head. I need to start with the hair. But this is going to be a Black Ross Lego guy. All right. So there's our head. And now I need to sketch the body. Um, so I'm going to go like so. that and then I think they remember and there's like a central piece here and 
Oh no, these are round. That's what it is. These are round. And then they come down like so. There's a little bit of a lip. This is all from memory, guys. So this is what I mean by drawing from observation so you can draw from your imagination. So I already did one like this, so I have a fairly good idea. Fairly good idea of how to kind of do a Lego fix. Black Ross should have a pen though. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a paintbrush. And this hand, I'll have holding a sketchbook or a marker, <laughs> or sorry, marker paper, <laughs> something like that. Quick sketches though, guys, quick sketches. All right, so there's our afro. Little smile. All right, something like that. <clears throat> This is always nerve wracking when you are just free balling it while drawing. Meaning I'm not doing gray marker or pencil here, just trying to go. There's, <laughs> there's my, <laughs> there's my Black Ross figure. Let's get him his marker paper pad. We'll add some color. Let's add some line weight just to kind of help clear things up, clean things up, if you will. So with line weight, I try to think in a three, two, one fashion. So three being the heaviest on the outside. One is going to be your general line and then two is where you have overlaps. So I go a little bit lighter where there's an overlap. Again, just a general guideline, not a hard and fast rule, but it's what I try to do. Thanks for the idea, Roshan. This was fun. I've done Legos before on the stream. Oh, the beard. <laughs> okay, okay, we want the beard. I forgot about that. Um, there you go. There's your beard. <laughs> Okay, I've got three minutes left, and then we'll do a little bit of a um, shout-out segment. Sarah is asking, does an industrial designer give those cool sketches to clients, or do they have to do CAD or 3D model? It just depends on the client. I'm working with a guy right now doing some rim for him for a car, and uh, it's a bit of both. I'm doing a little, a little bit of sketch, but also a lot of CAD. So it just depends on the project, really. Using a neutral gray seven for the majority of this here. I 
want to move fast. Alright, I'm always wearing black too, so I guess I'll do black. I'll do red pants. I do have a pair of red pants, so. I think this gray is finally running out. I have to get some more. Alright, this is obviously a paper made flare. That's what I use. All right, just want to add some body to the hair. <laughs> yes, not sponsored by Product Red. Actually, no, it has to be yellow because every I'm doing yellow on every sketch today. So I gotta wear yellow pants in this sketch, which will be interesting. Doo -doo. All right. So let's just finish off this textured plastic, undoubtedly that is making up the hair. Gotta be yellow pants. Cause I'm not making my face yellow, tell you what. That ain't happening. Let's go. So if you guys caught me on how to light objects, you'll recognize this. But as I move down, I actually want to go lighter. We need that contrast. And then as I move up to this brown section here, I hope this isn't too brown. So that contrast is just going to help, help the form read better. Just a reminder, if you guys enjoyed the show, appreciate your support. Hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts. If you're interested in other ways to support, you can purchase any of these sketches from the stream. Just we'll make it work. I know a few of you have in the past. Matt, Jordan, we had Brian from Instagram last time. So yeah, if you're interested, let me know. If you just want to donate, you just hit up that link, paypal.me slash sketchaday. If not, it's all good. I appreciate you being here. Special shout out and thanks again 
to you patrons, patreons. I'm not sure what to call you. But thank you. I was going to put something random on the cover here. For speed's sake. Oh yeah, Roshan's contributed in the past. He's been he's been pretty great. So Thank you for the ideas and for all the support. Much appreciated. All right, let's get some white. Get this thing popping. And then we're good. Just using a Moloto Molotow. I think every time I say that word, I say it twice, but Molotow White Pen is what I'm using right now. bit more contrast in some of the black on Mr. Ross here, Black Ross. Should I make miniature figures of myself, 3D print them and give those to you guys? That'd be fun. I've really been enjoying 3D printing. If you guys want to see videos on how to do that, let me know as well. It's going to be a fun summer. I'm going to be making stuff, breaking stuff. Right, guys so now is your time if you want to shout something out feel free to blast it in the chat keep it clean keep it good just want to share the love and say thank you for watching if you've made it this far I really appreciate it I know you all have things to do lives to live drinks to drink food to eat whatever so appreciate you being here Roshan says he would buy one. <laughs> well, I don't want Lego to sue me, so maybe I'll come up with something different. How about that? You know, every time I post something quote unquote cool and someone's like and everyone's like, yeah, I'll get one, I'll get one, then I make it and then it doesn't sell, I'm like, why did I even bother? But I know Roshan would get one. Because I believe Roshan. Roshan is the man. All right. He needed eyebrows. Okay, guys. <laughs> that was super fun. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Today's theme was yellow. Like I said, anything you want to say that is appropriate, go for it. But in the meantime, let's review. <laughs> Roshan says, shut up and take my cash. So let's review. We just did a little Lego minifigure of me. Suggested by Roshan. And all of these will be uploaded as well. But if you do want to purchase one, let me know. Um, Shoot me a DM, whatever, we'll figure it out. Okay, I'm, I'm probably gonna work on this a little bit after the stream, I wanna add a little white pencil. Um, but, there's our little dude. We also did a watch today, right there. We did a laptop. 
perfume bottle to kick things off. This is in no particular order, by the way. Here's our helmet. I still, if I were to scan this in, I would actually take it and just stretch it. That's what I would do, because it needs to be a little bit beefier and maybe add some stuff in the back. There is our clean version of the watch and vacuum cleaner. So, covered a lot of stuff today, a lot of sketches. Thank you so much for the suggestions. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being the best. Fans, up, comment, give suggestions, all of that. I love you sincerely. This is, I'm living my dream and thank you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, turn on those alerts. Stay tuned and pay attention to the page, sketchaday.com this week. I'm gonna be dropping some new stuff. Really excited to share with you. So watch out for that. And let's see what else. Oh, I'll be back Sunday. Sunday at, I think I moved the time this week. Um, I just need to spend a little bit more time with my kids. So it'll be Sunday at 12 Mountain, which is 11 a.m. Pacific. So two hours from when this one started is when the Sunday show will be. So as long as you check out the channel, you, you should see the live video that's upcoming. I'll post about it on Instagram all that good stuff but if you have alerts you won't miss it we'll have fun i'll be playing with photoshop it will be sci-fi sunday so with that i'll see you guys next time on sketch a day peace out